Hey people, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here and today I am going to be doing another interview with someone that was on a vegan diet that actually found that it affected their health in a negative way holistically and then they managed to regain their health through eating animal foods and she wanted to share her own story to maybe give some other vegans some insights into maybe the vegan diet isn't a diet that is working for them, maybe it's not the best diet for them and maybe they could start to regain their health well your health if you're a vegan that's not thriving and yeah we hope that her story inspires you at the same time so yeah thank you for joining us of course thank you for having me i appreciate you yeah you're welcome so yeah if you could just uh, introduce yourself like give your name and that because i can't actually pronounce your name well i might be able to it's okay. but yeah <laughs> it's okay <laughs> Yeah, so my name is Johnielle Maria. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And um, my background is that I have a business for health and for wellness. I was a fitness trainer. Ah. Uh, I practice functional patterns. I still do. However, I was also uh, nutrition. I also gave nutrition advice within that practice as well. So. Ah, yeah. okay. So you're someone that is a very knowledgeable person on like fitness, yes. physique, health, and everything. So yes. yeah. And yeah, yeah, even though you're you're that type of person even the vegan diet didn't work for you so yeah right. if you could give us a bit of a backstory first off I'd like sure. the audience to know is like what made you get into veganism in the first yeah. place oh my gosh that's <laughs> such a train wreck when I think about it um however in the beginning you know when I first started my businesses I was fresh out of college so I was really into developing yourself and you know, develop time management, your your uh, spirituality or, you know, just everything. I was into developing that. And one of the things was health. You know, your nutrition has to be on point, your exercise because of the benefits from it. So I just and having a background in biology is what I studied when I was in college. Uh. pre med. So I was just like, you know what? I want to find the best way to eat and the best way to work out so that I can keep my body in the best shape. And um, my mom was vegetarian for a while. And, you know, I started getting to the whole, like, raising your your your, your consciousness and, and that whole thing. And it just, I don't know, it just kind of like snowballed into, well, if you want to really vibrate on the highest level, then you shouldn't eat meat. And that's what got me. That's okay. what got me. Okay, yeah. cool. And is that something you just learned from your mom or did you learn it from looking at resources online or... Um, you know, it was like, she just kind of, she just did it for a while that I can remember in my life. But I remember thinking to myself, I would never stop eating meat. I think that was ridiculous. I literally said that to myself. And um, so I had that as a reference, but I never went online and looked on YouTube or anything to figure out how to do it. I was just like, you know, I wanted, you just take out the meat. That was my initial thing. And then I met certain uh you know I, you could say celebrity vegan chefs who then began to tell me well make sure you have this and make sure you have that uh, um, and so that was my introduction to that uh, okay so did mm -hmm. you first start off with vegetarianism and then switch to veganism or yes so that's exactly what happened because the cheese it was just like dairy in general i just could not process it well at least not the pasteurized um, yeah. dairy that not you know, the raw stuff I, <laughs> yeah exactly right right, right. yeah I, I didn't I just couldn't do that right and um so I was like oh well you know what I'll stop dairy first and that was the first thing I stopped and I noticed a huge difference in the sense of just I wasn't bloated every time after I ate it so I was like oh wow okay and then I let go of the meat just you know just thinking to myself and after I had conditioned the hell out of myself with uh... just videos and you know animal suffering and all this kind of stuff and then it's like, okay, I'll, I'll take that out first. So it was that gradual step. And then once I realized, oh, veganism is, you know, not using any animal products, then I began to also look at what I was buying and all these other things to make sure I wasn't using animal products. Yeah. So, yeah. so it sounds like at first, yeah, you got into it for the health reasons, but then you start to yes. learn about all of the other aspects of what vegans exactly. say the whole vegan lifestyle and diet is about. So yes. then obviously, you, like you said, you became very, I could I would say programmed and yes. yeah, very just sucked into that vegan world completely. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then obviously, like you said, through your own 
personal experience once you started to remove some of the animal based foods you actually you did right. notice some improvements mm -hmm. within within yourself holistically which yeah seems to be the case for many different people and would you say necessarily mm -hmm. that you felt better due to removing those things because they're inherently bad mm -hmm. or would you just say you weren't necessarily eating the highest quality animal foods possible so maybe that's why yeah. you weren't feeling so good from it yeah that's that's 100 true and, and that's what i realized later is that oftentimes we think that something's given us a benefit but we haven't really measured you know what all went into that so it's like I, I wasn't thinking about what I was eating the combinations of what I was eating or when I was eating and um I was just it was just low quality I mean it was just like regular stuff you get from a store it, it wasn't a thought in my mind about where is this coming from and if, as far as the milk goes it wasn't yeah. a thought in my mind it was just okay <laughs> you know yeah. ice cream like, you know cheese I'm eating that and it wasn't even good quality it was just you know crafts so, yeah yeah for sure yeah. And alongside that would you say that you also removed a lot of foods from your diet that was just maybe a lot of like processed foods or unhealthy exactly. other foods as well exactly yeah it, it was majority processed foods because i grew up growing my own food hunting and fishing oh, so wow. that's how i was raised wow. and i never had problems like when i go home to florida i never have problems eating from the land or going fishing that's how i was raised it was just when I was eating like the American way of eating like the, uh, you know, the processed foods and yeah. things like that. That's when you start to see. Wow. So you're a person mm -hmm. that really has had experience earlier on in your life with eating like yes. more of a diet that is ideal yes. for us. So you had that <laughs> exactly. like comparative viewpoint from your own experience. So, right. yeah, it seems to be... The case for a lot of people where they say well actually i thought it was the vegan diet giving me all the benefits but actually maybe it was due to me removing a lot of the crap from my yeah. diet that was affecting me in a negative way yeah and like you said the quality of it you know because it's just you know i i have uh, goat's milk now and it doesn't bother me uh -huh. you know i can have yogurt now and it doesn't bother me and so it's just like hmm you know <laughs> um I, I was really eating poor quality and yeah. uh, who knows what they were putting in that stuff with all the hormones and antibiotics. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah. So, yeah, so you ended up making the switch to the vegan diet, which you ended up mm -hmm. sticking on for around five years, correct? Yeah, a little over five years. Um, I think about five and a half years yeah. uh, total. Okay, cool. And mm -hmm. when you're on the vegan diet for the five-year period, what type of vegan diet was you eating? Did you stick to one vegan diet? Did you change it up mm -hmm. at times? What did that look like for you? Uh, for the most part, it was a whole foods, plant-based, um, you know, diet. I I didn't go too extreme. I would incorporate fasting, like maybe three or seven days of eating just fruits or, um, you know, just. Uh, juices or things like that but for the most part it was whole foods plant-based and um i ate all the time i ate every like all the time i didn't skip meals you know uh it, it changed towards the end because unconsciously i was looking for nutrition and my body was just like try this you know try that <laughs> so it kind of very little bit because i went from eating whole foods and eating all the time to sometimes just not eating anything because I was just it would just hurt so bad or oh, wow. you know to just eating to just drinking juices all the time oh, because wow. you just can't process certain things and you don't know that's what's going on wow okay so yeah, yeah. you were not one of these types of people because I have a lot of vegans looking at these ex-vegan mm -hmm. interviews saying well yeah. they just did something really really extreme or very restrictive but it sounds like you didn't do any like super long water fast you didn't do any fruitarian <laughs> diets for years <laughs> no. or raw veganism you seem mm -hmm. to be following probably the advice a lot of people out there like dr michael gregor uh, from nutrition facts and a lot of these vegan doctors that say a whole food mm -hmm. plant-based vegan diet is the best most balanced vegan diet yeah, I um I I just found out about him. Uh, but it was just really me being like, you know, again, I was I, I train people, so the fasting was always a way to uh, cleanse the body or to reset the body. In my from my viewpoint yeah. at that time, it, it was never uh, a long term thing. So for me, it was like, okay, I'm I'm an athlete, so I'm active every day. I have to fuel my body, 
And um, and I also had clients. So I tested what I did out on my clients as well. Uh, So it wasn't just me. I was gathering data on my clients who some of them ate animal products and some some of them didn't. And so I was able to measure that over a period of time as well. Wow, yeah. wow, that's really, really cool to hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like you said, you got initial benefits from it, but mm-hmm. when did it start to go downhill for you and what were the negative symptoms that you first started to notice on the vegan diet? Yeah, well, now that I know what those symptoms are, when I look back on it, it was within the first year. <clears throat> excuse ah, me, the first wow. year I noticed, I noticed it. Um, it was, I'm naturally, I'm 5'3", and I'm naturally about 125 to 130. So that's not skinny for my my yeah. my height at all. It's it's just it's an athletic build, right? Um, I immediately lost all my weight. I mean, I went from one twenty five to like one ten. Wow. And yeah, I mean, it was to a point where people were like, they didn't even recognize me. They were like, Who, "What's happened to you?" And I'm just like, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm feeling great though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Um, that was the first thing I noticed. And you were eating like very consistently, like you're saying, like yes. And I guess you was, I, I guess you were still working out as well. You didn't stop working. Yes, out. no, I didn't stop working out. I was eating. I would actually at that when I first started, I was prepping my meals for the week. Yeah. So I was eating three to five times a day, you know, two snacks and three meals every single day. I was not at all just kind of like. You know, oh, I'm busy and I can't eat. No, it was like I'm eating at this time. I schedule my practice around eating, wow, so okay. that's how important it was. Yes, yeah, so it's a bit like a bodybuilding diet and the the exactly. prep they do. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. You... Um, but the first thing I noticed was the weight loss, and then it was I I started to notice that my energy, at, like in the beginning, I noticed that I wasn't as um, I wasn't as constipated, but to be honest with you, that was from eating processed foods. I was just eating so much crap that it wasn't just the veganism. It was just I was more conscious overall of what I was t- in taking in my yeah. body. And um, my energy levels dropped. Like, I couldn't finish working out. I would work out for about 20 minutes, and then I would just feel like I need to stop. And that was something I noticed as well. And it actually started to make me not want to train as much anymore wow so would you Mm -hmm. say alongside that it just affected your whole sports performance your strength yes definitely stamina definitely that yeah i mean and i and the whole time i was just like and i know it did because one of my goals i write down my goals every month my goal consistently for five and a half years was to gain literally i wrote it just like this to gain the weight on a vegan diet that i had when i was eating animal products wow that's exactly what my goal was you know so wow and you definitely yeah definitely like yeah. from what you're saying you're someone that's very knowledgeable on diet you test things out with yourself and other mm-hmm. people you're a, you're a fitness trainer so yeah. for your fitness to go downhill like that and your sports performance and your physique weight just drop it's just like yeah. whoa this t- yeah, I, it, it was a lot. And, you know, I noticed the same in my clients as well. It, they felt great when they would do like a, a seven day plant based uh, reset, but then their energy would plummet as well. And so they would end up going back to eating meat and feeling the huge, you know, energy surge. And so, uh, um, you know, I noticed that in them as well. Their yeah. energy plummeted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So even though you start to have these things go on, there's obviously other effects that happen later on, which we would talk about. Mm-hmm. Why did you keep sticking out the vegan diet (laughs) you know what that's a great question and it was because in my mind i had i had already conditioned myself to believe because that's all it was at that at that point that it was sufficient so for me it was okay i wasn't eating maybe i wasn't eating enough even though i was maybe i wasn't eating the right foods you know maybe i should stop eating the fats or maybe you know what i mean like just you start to reason outside of the fact that it's the diet and it was just because I I just already believed it was uh, sufficient. And so it couldn't be the diet. That was the last thing I was even uh, thinking about, you know what I mean? It was my execution. That's what I was reasoning with with myself. Okay, so you were taking full yeah. responsibility for why it wasn't working. And as yeah. many vegans out there would say to people that aren't thriving on a vegan diet, well, you're just doing something wrong. So it's obviously right. good that you did that. But like you said, <laughs> yeah. you look back now and you're like, well, actually, it was just the vegan diet was not sustainable yeah. and optimal for me. No, and, you know, it's like when I, I look back on it now, I, 
I don't, I don't, I never remember going onto the internet and typing in um, negative effects of the vegan diet. I uh. only remember hearing other people tell me what they felt and then, you know, typing in on Google benefits of vegan diet. I never went to see what the other side looked like just to have that in my mind. So when I'm getting different symptoms and I'm seeing all these different results, I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's something else. I never thought it would be the diet. Wow. Yeah, which mm -hmm. seems to be um, a trend for a lot of people that are having this goal. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of ridiculous when I think about it, but... Yeah, yeah, but I guess it's just like, I know from my experience and talking to many other ex-vegans, you just have these vegan mm -hmm. goggles on and you just don't see it until you're out of it fully and things start to really right. go downhill and you're waking yourself mm -hmm. to the reality of what's going on. So yeah, apart right. from these negative effects, as you went even further onto the vegan diet, what other negative symptoms did you notice holistically? Right, well, it literally went from like not seeing the weight gain to just always feeling tired to then overeating. That was the next thing I noticed is the fact that I could never stay full. It was just like, well, you would get full but not satiated, you yes. know what I mean? Yep. Like you would just be like, <laughs> I'm throwing i would eat a meal so big and i prepared my meals from scratch i didn't buy processed coconut milks or nothing i made it all from scratch and i still do so you know as far as like my coconut milks i i i made huge meals and i would eat that and then 20 to 30 minutes later be like i need something else and then just start downing cashews or something crunchy with you know some type of i mean it was ridiculous i would eat all the time and i would brag about it oh, now that I'm vegan, you know, it's like, I can never be satisfied. I'm always eating, you know, it's just like <laughs> stupid. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, dude, and I had the same experience, so I can relate to that. So you yeah. just have this uncontrollable hunger where you're trying to stuff down food and make yourself feel full, which you can have your stomach yes. capacity for, but you're not right. satiated. So you, would you say with this all going on, that a lot of time you were just spending so much time and energy and focus on food and food just became such a huge focus point, which took focus yes. off other areas of life? Yes, it, it was ridiculous. And I did not know how much of a food addict and how much of a bad relationship with food I developed until I stopped being vegan because it was always, I mean, I would be thinking about the next meal as I'm eating. You know, like it was that bad. It was that bad. And I would be th I was sitting there eating and be totally unsatisfied with what I'm eating, considering the next meal I'm going to eat and how I'm going to eat that so much. You know, wow. What I mean? like, wow. Yeah. So it was ridiculous. Yes. Yeah, so it started to for you started to form a very unhealthy sort of food obsession you could say but it was yeah. you was obsessing over it because you were starving starving <laughs> you yeah, starving you know and then it's like you know you're starving on a level you just don't know that it's because of the diet you know you're just like I, there's something missing and you're just like searching for it in your mind and then you're finding yourself on Pinterest looking at all these different recipes to try and find something that will satiate what that you know that hunger that you're looking at that you yeah for sure and like, yeah, I, yeah I, I can relate <laughs> to that fully because i'd listened to certain vegan teachers out there it's called like freely enduring rider and they would just say you've just mm -hmm. got to eat more so i was just like i stuffed yeah. myself more and more and more and more and more but had the same experience as you had going on she's just yeah. and and would you say you ever had any unhealthy relationship with food prior to the vegan diet or any sort of no yeah nah i would eat and be happy and thankful for my meal. Cause again, I used to grow on my food. So I've, I've developed that relationship with the plant from a seed. You know, I was used to uh, fishing or hunting for my food. For, so it was just like, you give thanks, you eat, and then your mind is on doing other things. You know, um, I was never like this before ever. Wow. Okay. So it wasn't like you had like a relapse of some sort of eating disorder or anything <laughs> no, like that. No, no, not at all. No, 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 no. 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 Yeah. I mean, I enjoy food, you know what I mean? Yeah. However, it wasn't like, it wasn't like uh, I had any, you know, terrible relationships uh, pre-existing at all. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, was there any other, neg yeah, what would, well, what were the other negative symptoms yeah. that you started to notice over a period of time? So it was uh, the constant bloating, the fatigue and energy. Then it became, um, you know, my hair began to thin significantly. Wow. And I have thick hair. Everybody in my family has thick hair. It, we do not have any issue with baldness or anything like that and on any part of my family. And um, I just noticed that, and I wear my hair big and curly for the most part. 
And I just noticed that it started to just get, you know, not shorter, but just thinner and thinner and like more to my head. And um, it took a while for me to really notice it. My edges right here, they started to just thin out. And I couldn't, you know, for, for the women out there, we know I couldn't comb my baby hair down at all. I couldn't. It was just it was not there. And it was just thinning so much. And um, because it happened gradually, I noticed it. But I just thought, again, I reasoned it. I was just like, well, maybe, you know, I'm just not um, I'm wearing my hair too tight or something, you know. And I, I rarely wore my hair as tight. But, you know, so I just reasoned it over again. Um, another thing was my skin began to get very dry. I started to break out in like patches of just dryness on my skin Wow! and throughout my body. And it was um, it was concerning because I had never had that before and I didn't know what it was, you know. And um, just previously working with other clients, often what you hear, what you may research is uh, skin dryness, maybe uh, fungus overgrowth in different areas of your body or parasites. So all these different yeah. uh, reasons why. And uh, obviously nutrition uh, deficiency as well, nutrient deficiency, however, it was very concerning to me to a point where like my shoulder had like this big scab on it and um, it was just really dry. And then I started to develop it here, here on my legs and then in my face and then my head. I got the worst dandruff ever, like just huge. It it just looked like psoriasis on my head. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah. And I never had that before. Yes, you'd never had any of these effects prior to a vegan diet. No, not at all. You know, so it was that then um, my my cycle stopped for like two or three months. It just would not come on. And at first I was kind of like, and and this is how bad the conditioning is as well, because some people say that you're not supposed to have a cycle. really. Yes. Uh, You know what I mean? And it's dumb. It's dumb. But at the time, I was just like, oh, okay. You know, um, I've heard of women who are more athletic, maybe not having periods. But, you know, so I just kind of reason that off and just say, okay, it'll come back. You know, it's not a a huge thing. Um, But the second month when it didn't come back, I started to get concerned. And then the third month when it didn't come back, I was just like, what is going on? Like, this is crazy, you know. Um, And... What what else? I mean, uh, and yeah, dizziness. You're, yeah, and you're someone that's very young as well, so that's not normal to happen. Yes, that age. You're not going through no, menopause. Twenty nine. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I'm at the height of what I should have reproduction. Yeah. I'm yeah. not in the low ends of it, you know. Um, so that was that was just like whoa. And then and I and I know just from my health background that your reproductive system is how you reproduce your entire life force. Yes. You know what I mean? So if you're not using it to reproduce children, you're reproducing yourself. Yeah. And that was me being concerned because I was like, well, if I'm not able to reproduce myself in that capacity, then I'm also lacking in reproduction of myself in this capacity. Yeah. Um, And so that was concerning. Dizziness, blood sugar issues. I started to notice that where I would eat. And for the most part, I started my morning with fruits and then I would go heavier towards throughout the you know the rest of the day, and I would eat, and within like ten or fifteen minutes, my blood sugar would just be like I would be shaking like this, like really shaking, um, dizziness like crazy. If I didn't eat, it was like I had to literally sit down one day and just ground myself, take my shoes off, and put my feet in the ground because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know I was like getting dizzy and lightheaded. I just knew that I didn't feel right and that my equilibrium was off. So, you know, I was just my intuition was just like, take your shoes off and put your feet in the ground because that's about the best you can yeah, do yeah, right yeah. now. You know, and, and I did that. And so my blood sugar was so unstable that I, I had to stop training later um, as I progressed into veganism because I just wow. wasn't able to. Yeah, I wasn't able to maintain the proper mental focus either. And my blood sugar was so low that it was like I had to eat consistently um or eat something that would tie me over. And, and even though that was animal products, I wasn't eating that, so, yeah. you know, at that time. And uh, my me- mental focus was so bad. I remember I would literally just wake up and have no energy. I could barely move my head because it, it just got so heavy. My neck got so small. I've always had a thick neck. I've never had a small neck. And it just got so small that I could barely wake up and lift my head some days. You know, wow. and I had to call out for my clients because I just wouldn't have the energy. I wouldn't have the energy to go and train, talk to anybody. I would just sit on the bed for like hours and just like dream, like just daydream. Wow. Just go off. Yeah, it was bad. 
Wow, so you're deteriorating at quite a rapid rate where you can't even participate yeah. in life fully and then obviously it can affect your income as well, which is obviously not a good yeah. thing. You can't do everything you want to do, connect with the people you want right. to. Wow. Yeah, and I train martial arts too. Um, I train uh, ninjutsu. So it's it's going to class, I started to notice that I just didn't, um, I felt so weak. And I was an earth element when I started off. You know, we had five elements. So I was starting off with grounding and learning how to ground. And when you're training and, you know, you're you're going through the motions to learn how to defend or protect other people, you, you have to be physical. And I just noticed that, you know, and so I just noticed that it felt like my bones were getting very frail. You know, wow. I felt like I was getting very, very frail. And I would just be kind of like hunched over and just very, you know, frail, uh, fragile feeling. Wow. So yeah. Yeah, you said about the reproductive system, it's like your life force was being completely sapped yes. from 100%. within you. Yeah. Look, it, I would have thought it was a vampire in the room somewhere because it was that bad. It was that bad. Like I, again, couldn't show up to certain trainings. I had to, um, I literally like made myself go to martial arts class and I would just not do too much. I would just do right, you know, just enough because I didn't want to. It was times where I would just be like, if I go harder than this, then I'll hurt myself. Yeah. You know? Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, listen very carefully to what she's saying. She never had any yeah. of these issues before. She was eating yeah. like natural foods until she started eating a standard American diet. She was eating a whole food plant based diet most of the time, never did anything restrictive like training, working out. She's very fit, very healthy. And yeah, it still wasn't working for her. Because so I know many of you vegans that have been watching this will say, well, it's because she did this wrong or this wrong or that wrong. And I know the vegans will still say you did something wrong anyway, because that's just what they're like. But <laughs> yeah, I just, do, yeah, I just want to affirm that. So <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Did you notice that it affect you, with, affected you with all this going on emotionally as well? And how, how were your yes. stress levels? And Whew. Yes, I was everywhere. Like, I mean, um, you know what? I would say that I, I noticed it more so than anything because I'm very analytical of what I allow myself to emotionally, the state I live in. And so, and I say that be obviously because of the training with ninjutsu too, is, is you have to train your emotions because that's the first thing that goes when you are yeah. in an altercation, you know. So I was able to maintain my emotions. However, I noticed that I would just be so, um, that I would just have a, a lot of thoughts that were about And I had a lot of thoughts that were about, and this wasn't from training because I've always trained. So, uh, okay. you know, this was specifically about like um just oh I, you know and just kind of being in, in this this I'm not depressed but just this like low melancholy type of state yeah and um just eight just reactionary you know I would catch myself firing off about things and just be like why am I even caring about that I'm I'm just I'm really just going off so much you know you know what I mean uh, just going off so much, being so react, uh, so reactionary, and I, I didn't have to be like that. So I noticed I was very short fused as well. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah it's... probably from starving, but <laughs> yeah, no, the exact same thing happened yeah. to me. I couldn't handle life anymore and just getting stressed yeah. out and everything all the time. So yeah, it seems to be a common thing that happens to a lot of people that yeah. go downhill on a vegan diet. Very, I felt very. Um, what is the word? It's like you. I, I couldn't do anything about my about my situation. That's how I felt. Wow. You know, like you you write down goals and you write down things that you choose to achieve and accomplish, and then it's like I would get in my head and just stay there. The the will and the action and the physical energy to do it and implement it just it seemed like it just left me. There was no way I could. Yeah, no no drive yeah. for life. There isn't a life force. That's what it's it is. like how yeah, can you yeah, if you got nothing. no <laughs> yeah. no life force? How can you go out into the world and achieve all these things and do these things? Right. Which obviously right. then with all that going on, you're not functioning well, you can't do these things and that's obviously having a negative effect alongside the vegan diet as well for how you're right. feeling emotionally. So yeah, you ended up doing it like we said for almost five years. So what got you to the point where you started to awaken to the reality that maybe this isn't working? Did you try other things to try and make it work at first? Did you try supplementation? Like you said, you mm -hmm. tried modifying the diet a bit. Like, yeah, what did that look like? Uh, the extent of that went to just modifying the diet. And that was even unconscious. You know, that was just me consciously, subconsciously looking for food, you know, nutrition. And um, 
what what really got me to that point was that I started to write uh, my book, Self Care Regulations, which okay. is just a measurement for how to, you know, measure your health. Whatever you say works, measure it out. And so that's what I started to work on that. And towards the end of that book, I I'm a huge person about testing and being more scientific rather than being dogmatic about things. So I said to myself, you know, I've noticed that my clients, looking over my data, I've noticed that my clients have had really great health and they eat meat they're eating fish they're eating you know pasture raised uh you know animals and things like that and i was just like i would be i would be hypocritical if i put this book out and say that i think (laughs) that you can you know eat animals and still be healthy because that was always my position i just didn't choose it for myself and so in that way i was still being self-righteous because i still thought i was being better you know what i mean However, um, I said, well, I have to try this. I have to try fish or I have to try something. And it really was just my body being like, you about to die. you need to do something else. And um, I was just considering that. It was just a consideration. And so then uh, that was in December. And then I was doing my hair. And I was like, let me, you know, wash and condition my hair. I conditioned my hair and it just literally felt like I had about a handful of hair. It, it didn't feel like I had like a big, massive, thick hair like I like I usually do. And my intuition was just like, take a picture of the back of your head. And I was just like, okay, that's weird, but I'm gonna do it. So I did it, and I saw. I will send you the pictures. I literally saw patches of hair gone from my hair. Wow. It was crazy. I mean, all around my edges, in the middle of my hair, it was just so thin. And then I started to um, look all the way around my hair. And I'm just like, what is going on? So at that point, I'm a little vain when it comes to my hair. So I was just like, whatever it is, I will, you know, what is it? I didn't go the route of supplements because I was just like, you know, if this is really the way that I need to eat, then I don't need a supplement. I shouldn't have to take a supplement for essential minerals. You know what I mean? So um, I, I just I didn't do that because I said to myself when I first started, if I come to the point where I need to take supplements, I will stop the diet because it is uh, not. Okay. That means it's not one that is natural for me to eat. Wow, know? that's this really. Um, that's really good that you yeah. had that type of viewpoint at that time. You still had that viewpoint. Right. Like I think it's very important for people to hear. If a diet is ideal for okay. people, you shouldn't need yeah. supplements. Like that's such a good point to make. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's because if the technological world were to just shut down overnight, you would not be able to get to those supplements. So. Yeah you know, you would have to thrive or survive based on what nature allows. So um, that was always my position on that. And even when I started veganism, I started with a with a measurement, with a with data, with a method that I could apply. So that way I was able to track what I ate and everything I did from those five and a half years uh, with that concept. However, um, what allowed me to see that it wasn't working was that once I realized my hair was falling out, I was just like, oh, man, if my hair is falling out, that means that my reproductive system is is, is going down as well because the follicles, you know, all of that is hair. Everything is hair. So I was just like, OK, well, let me, my, you know, let me let me look on YouTube so that I'm going to YouTube and I'm typing in vegan hair loss. And I see this woman. I don't even remember her name, but um, she's talking about she has gray hair and she's talking about how she started to take B12 supplements because her hair was falling out. So I'm watching it and I'm like, you're taking B12 supplements because your hair's falling out? Wait a minute, something's not right. So then I'm, I'm just scrolling through more, looking for more information. Yeah. I look over to the right and I see ex-vegan hair loss. And I was just like, I didn't know that there were ex-vegans in the world. Like, <laughs> what is going on? So I click it just to, fig- just to you know, hear what they were talking about. Because at this point, I was desperate because I was like, I'm not losing my hair. Like, something has to go. And I'm listening to it. And it was, I forget, what's his name? Is it Syringe or Syringe? Yeah, I, I, some people pronounce it different. Sverage. Sp- <laughs> that's how I okay, pronounce him. Sverage, yeah. okay. I, I, I had no idea who he was, but I saw those videos and I watched it. Just one of them. And my mouth was just to the floor because I was just like, everything that this person is saying, I experience, you know, and I don't know them. And so I immediately accepted his diet. I watched maybe about 20 ex-vegan videos. Oh, wow. And okay. I was just like, it's a diet. It's that's it set right with me. I was just like, it's the diet. I'm I'm not 
I don't have to be convinced. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's a diet. And then I called my mom and asked her, and she told me she had to start eating um, fish and incorporating lamb in her oh, diet as wow. well because she noticed that her hair was falling out. So, you know, that was wow. all I needed. Wow. So, yeah, it was so good that you're able to be, like, not attached to the diet and not be dogmatic and be very analytical, like you said, with doing your own testing yeah. so you could compare your results and that. So right. sound like you were, like, one of the more conscious people with your whole diet and what was going on. So you could actually mm -hmm. be like, okay, well, this has got to a point now where this symptom's going on with the hair and this is getting a breaking yeah. point and I need to shift. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's over, yeah. So it's good that, yeah, it got to that point to, yeah, make you switch things up. So, so this went on for you. Did you do any research prior to switching back to animal foods? Or did you just go out there and eat animal foods straight away? Or what was <laughs> yeah. the whole transition with that? Uh, yeah, the transition was I learned through watching the vegan videos, yeah. the ex-vegan videos, more about um, pasteurized, uh, you know, uh, prop, well, pasture-raised, not pasteurized, pasture-raised, animals and i already developed a relationship with a butcher in my local area because my dog i fed him raw meat so i got my i know right i said because yeah no no wait i'll say as well i had a puppy before and from birth yeah. all he ate was raw meat and organs yeah yeah <laughs> and, and you know it was like i knew the meat was healing because the reason why really quick the reason why i even fed him raw meat was because the purina had a dog like a food recall or something like that and he was throwing up from the food so wow. I started to go and research and I was just like you know what I don't want to just feed him I call myself eating the best diet I want to give him the best thing so I researched and it was just saying how dogs need meat so I just started saying okay I'll get him meat went to the butcher and started getting him raw meat and noticed that his skin and coat started to improve <laughs> he didn't have bad breath he drank water like a little bit but not so much like he used to and his his bowel movements were much drier, meaning he was actually absorbing his yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nutrients in his food. So I had that yeah. as well. You know, you know what I mean? And I was just like, okay. And so then listening to everyone else say, make sure you go to the pasture raised and my butcher, he's a halal butcher. So I did a whole video, uh, even when I was vegan, on just the proper meats to eat because I had clients that ate meat. Yeah. And so I just went back to all of that information and then studied more on um you know the best way to eat eggs and you know the fish to get and everything like that that because in georgia i don't fish as much um, i am now however i didn't at that time so you know it was just like okay i need to get all of this information down so that i know what to do and two i had to stop eating plants because it was so disruptive to my system i just i would eat one time and be bloated the whole day wow. so um i had to stop eating them and i just went more so um carnivores for a little while just to replenish my uh, let my intestines yeah. replenish the villi come back and everything you know yeah, to be sure. able to handle a little bit more carbs and a little bit more uh, you know fiber and things like that yeah and it's interesting what you're saying and that your dog was basically getting the benefits that you <laughs> yes. were not getting on the vegan diet and that's right. so good to have <laughs> Yeah. Even though he's not a person, but it's a dog. And I noticed yeah. that my dog, he was just thriving from it. It was just working so wow. well for him. But it's funny then, people like us, we then sort of switch around the whole loop and end up doing what the dog's been doing yeah. type of thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, and dogs are fed a plant-based diet because that's what dog food is for the most part. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what was the first food you started experimenting with and what were the benefits yes. you noticed? Did you, did you notice a lot of benefits from day one or...? What was your experience yes, with that? Yes, immediately. It was immediate. It was so immediate. It was scary. It was scary. So it's actually my favorite part of the whole thing because it was so so rewarding to be wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean about what I had thought before. I first experimented with quail eggs, um, and the reason why was because I couldn't get to where I was at the time. I could not get to not where I was, but what I when I decided to eat meat, the other stores were closed, so I couldn't go get pasture okay. eggs pasture raised eggs so i was just like let me get the best highest quality eggs that i could and a local farm raised quails so they had quail eggs in the store and that's why i chose the quail uh. eggs so they're just they were just so small though i literally had to crack all 24 just to yeah. get <laughs> enough but um i cooked the quail eggs and um i mean it's that was the first thing i ate and some cod some fish 
And I thought, you know, it's funny enough, but I'm like looking through the fish, looking for parasites. And I'm like, just so paranoid. I'm like looking for parasites. Uh, and the fish was the first thing I got. And then it was the eggs. And, um, you know, I, I'm like thinking to myself, man, I'm going to have dreams about this fish being in the sea and dying and all this kind of stuff. And I'm telling you, I ate that fish. And the first thing I think I thought to myself was, I forgot how amazing this tasted, you know, <laughs> that's the first thing. And then the second thing was just like, it felt like my spirit sat back down in my body. Wow. It was just like, I felt literally a heaviness, like somebody pushed me. It felt just like that. Wow. And I just remember my body, like having this, you know how you, your body talks to you in that way? You just have this thought, and my thought was, I'm back. It was like my body literally was like, I'm back. Light you know? bulb. So, yes, and um, I slept like a rock at the bottom of the sea that first night. It was just like, bow. <laughs> I hadn't slept that good in five years. Wow. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not that I had insomnia. It was yeah. just um, I would wake up throughout the night or turn and I just wasn't satiated. So it was just like this anxiety I would have sometimes in sleeping and wow. uh, I would have night sweats and things like that. So um, this one, I didn't have that. And when I ate those eggs the next morning, I mean, it was just like, I felt the rush of blood come to my hands because I was always cold. Wow. And it was just like, my body felt like it was turning on for the first time in five years. Yeah, it sounds like that. Literally everything in the body was like <laughs> yeah, right? coming back to what's known as homeostasis. Everything's functioning yes. optimally and working fully and everything's going yes. to where it needs to and everything. Yes, I mean, I, and, and I felt so grounded. I felt so like stable and just like I didn't have the same concerns and worries. I didn't even know I was anxious until I stopped being vegan and I realized how jittery and how, you know, just... T- on like edge. almost ticking all the time yeah. yes on edge all the all the time i was um wow so but, you know so so you were aware that certain negative effects were going on but once you started eating animal foods a lot of things started to go away that you yeah. didn't necessarily know was an issue previously exactly exactly and what really let me know that i was really like really on the edge of probably <laughs> seriously was because when I ate that salmon, I had some sockeye salmon for the first time. Uh, and it went straight to my brain. It felt like somebody poured olive oil all over my head, you know? And my like my, my muscles literally started to like twitch. It wow. looked like I was just like ticking or something. It, it was like my muscles were twitching <sighs> because it was like everything was just turning back on, you know? Wow. It was amazing. Yeah, you, yeah. what you're saying is, is very similar to what I've said. I haven't heard anyone else say <laughs> yeah. it. But once yeah. I would eat one animal food after being vegan for six years, I could feel like it going to my brain, to my heart. I could feel it where yes. it was going and just giving me all the cholesterol yes. and other things that I've been lacking for so long. Well, so it's really interesting yes. to hear that from you as well, that you experience a very similar thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, it was like immediate. And I thought I was like, oh, my gosh, did I do something wrong? But then it was just like it felt so good that I knew I didn't do anything wrong. And it was just like I literally felt like some, it was an operator in the back, just like plugging in electricity to different parts of my body that I hadn't had collagen in, that I had cholesterol in, that I didn't have just minerals in general. You know, so wow. that was that was all I needed. I was just like, you know what? Omega threes are real, and I don't need anybody else to yeah. convince me that what I was doing was wrong before, because my body is the te- the testament to that. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. that. Literally, is the testament, and it's so good you're able to listen to your own body and not necessarily like people outside of yourself or necessarily head. It's like you made an informed choice to switch to animal foods, but you just listen to your body. It's like yeah. I've tried this; it's working. And yeah. I'm going to run with this for sure. Yeah. I also noticed, to the importance of different foods, switching back to animal foods, because I initially went back with just eating um, meat because that was the only thing I could handle for a while. And I still don't do a crazy amount of you know, fiber and greens. I just do a small amount, like a small herbal salad, something with more like cilantro and things like that. Um, so I'll, I'll do like a small herbal salad. But I don't I'm, I'm not too big on the on the greens or anything like that right now. Um, but I noticed the importance of fruit, how fruit really does help move things along okay. and it does help keep you regulated. So but I only have it like before a workout, yeah. you know, because it gives you that extra little sugar, you know, that glycogen and things. And 
I have it during the afternoon. So I noticed how having the, the meats is really good for building the body and nourishing the body and having that fruit is really good for just cleansing it out, keeping everything going. And, um, you know, so it, it really allowed me to really see firsthand how beneficial the foods are rather than just reading about it yeah. and not really being able to gauge that for yourself. You yeah, know? yeah, for sure. So you said yeah. at first you switched to a carnivore diet and how long did you mm -hmm. roughly do that for? Do you know? Yeah, no, uh, for about two months. It was about maybe two months. And that was about the tipping point to when I was like, okay, I, I can start to handle a little bit more because I... You know, I'm an islander, so I love yucca. I love I, I love um, cassava and things like that, so yeah. um, plantain. So I could still handle those. And so I was like, okay, I can handle a little bit more plantain. And then I noticed, too, that working out, it, it just allowed me to build my body so much more. So uh, okay. having certain carbs. So I just said, okay, well, I'll use that when I'm working out and um, as energy throughout the day. But to actually replenish my body, I'll use the meat to yeah. do that. So yeah, yeah. That's it was really, roughly two months. Yeah, it's really good to know. So would you say, mm -hmm. it sounds like this is what you're saying. At first, you felt you really needed to exclude all plant-based foods and go on a carnivore oh, yeah. diet, maybe just to heal a mm -hmm. lot of the damage that's been done on a vegan diet and so you could get to a mm -hmm. point where you could tolerate other foods that you want to eat. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I say carnivore, I wasn't, um, I didn't do raw. The only thing I did raw was like egg yolks. Yeah. Um, so that was the only thing I, I would do raw uh, or like maybe fish. Um, but just the rest of it was, you know, for the most part sauteed in crazy amounts of butter, um, <laughs> pasture raised butter and things like that. And again, it was just because I tried to eat plants, you know, and incorporate it with the meats. But I noticed that meat works better digestion wise by itself. Uh, so okay. I normally just eat it by itself. And um, I didn't want to combine and just do too much because of my digestion was already crap at that time. Yeah. And, you know, it was just like my stomach would just like spasm if I would have a lot of uh, plants. So uh, I just stopped. Okay. I had to. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you had to because of the negative effects it was having with you. Like you said, you tried it a little bit, but it wasn't working. So you simplified, mm -hmm. which is obviously easier for your mind as well to be able to simplify yes. not make it so complicated but yeah i want people I, I wanted to ask you more on that like i just did so mm -hmm. for anyone listening a lot of people think that you have to stick on a carnival diet for the rest of your life you don't necessarily have to some people make that choice some people mm -hmm. feel they need to some people feel that they don't but a lot of people feel after a period of time you can switch back to other foods so remember it doesn't necessarily have to be permanent because i do have some friends okay. that have switched from a vegan diet recently that okay. are concerned they're going to stick to a carnival diet for the rest of their life and they don't want to do that yeah. I'm like no 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 you can if you want but it doesn't necessarily have to go <laughs> yeah. that direction yeah no it, it doesn't and and um you know for the most part i'm, I'm just about eating what na what the local nature around you provides and not importing so much food because it really it really takes away from eating certain light that you need that that local environment will prepare you for that uh, weather of that environment yeah. as well so you know it's, it's all creating that homeostasis and uh, for me you know I, again I, I grew up this way so I grew, grow a little bit of food however I also forage for a little food and then you know you hunt and you fish and so it's just having that uh, that balance is is for me, what shows to be important, it was just I had to work my way to get to that balance. Yeah. And I'm still I'm still finding myself, you know, mostly eating a lot more um, meats and, and stews, you know, for that broth and things like that. However, I do incorporate goat's milk because it's, it's just really great um, as yeah. far as like for probiotics, especially for women out there. If you guys like it's awesome, please, please. And um, honey with that as well. And so, again, fruits before a workout just for that sugar and that, that extra water. And uh, that just helps you to stay regular, too. And that's really, for the most part, where I'm at right now. Yeah, okay, cool. So mm -hmm. as you started to experiment and go on this whole journey of animal foods even further, did mm -hmm. you find that it started to resolve all of the other negative symptoms you had and you started to Immediately. notice? Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately. It was laughable. It literally, I had to sit and laugh at myself because I was just like, I literally almost <laughs> myself. Like, you know what I mean? And it was, I just had to laugh because at the same time, I was so, I was so hurt by my own actions, you know? Like, because yeah. I'm thinking, I, I hurt my reproductive system. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I did damage to myself and um, my hair started to grow back thicker. I mean, like, within a month, I could tell the difference. 
wow. of my hair. And I have like the vegan hair on the end of my hair. You know what I mean? And yeah. then like towards the roots, it's just like thick. And here I'm still growing, you know, my um, edges back in a little bit. However, it's it's almost grown back. I don't have the blood sugar issues anymore. I have my energy is through the roof. Um, again, my libido went down. So that was also another no. Uh, that was like, whoa. And overnight, it was just like yeah. back. You know what I mean? And <laughs> we all need that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So uh, that and then I've been able to start picking up weight as well. So and not really doing too much exercise because I wanted to give myself that time to rejuvenate yeah. and just, you know, so. Um, I haven't even been doing that much exercise and I've still noticed that my body is gaining weight and just naturally filling out and it just, my skin, I've never had issues with my skin until I went vegan and, um, my skin is back, it's glowing, it's healthy, like, it's, it's amazing. The first thing everybody said to me was, wow, your skin is just glowing so much more than it ever has and, and that was from eating meat. Yeah, and I see that happen to yeah. a lot of people. They seem to have a type of skin where it's like that baby soft skin, like literally yes. just like super high quality skin. Super yeah. high quality. I yeah. mean, it's it's like, it, this. it's amazing. And, and it also brought me to be a lot more conscious and honorable for the lives that have to go into my food. It was very, um, I'll say humbling in that way. In the sense of just being like, wow, I really, I really give thanks now. I really, really give thanks for uh, the life that I'm consuming so that I can contribute to more in society and, and give more, you know what I mean, to the world because I need it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly yeah. that. So would you say that's a positive benefit you got from the vegan diet, what you just said? Oh, yeah, definitely. Overall, it, it, was, it was a positive because it gave me a, a better perspective on food. Also, too, I think it's something to be said when someone can deprive themselves of the very minerals they need to survive, you know, just in a sense of your your will to to follow what you yeah. think is, is proper, you know. So that discipline in itself is, is a good thing that you, you're that disciplined, that you were willing to put your life on the line. <laughs> like, I think that is um, that was also a plus in that way. And, and, and just being able to know for ourselves, because when we look into the news and into society, they're pushing a plant based diet. Everything is turning plant based, even with the whole thing. I hear people all the time saying, oh, let me be plant based. Let me be vegan, you know, to be healthy. And it's like I would have thought that way and I would have promoted that had I not been through it myself. You know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Without a doubt. And would you say you've gotten to the point now where you're not having to eat five meals a day, you're not hungry all the time, you're not obsessing over food all the time and having an unhealthy yeah. relationship with food? That was another thing that was like so, it, it was the amount of time I was putting into food was just ridiculous. I used to spend, and I'm saying spend, I used to spend about maybe an hour and a half preparing food. Now it's like 30 minutes of that. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm eating, I'm satiated, and then, you know, I'll take a minute, let my food digest, and then I'm moving to the next thing. I'm, I'm going, doing what it is I need to do. I have energy. I have the will and the drive to, to do what I need to do. And um, I don't even think about food anymore. I'm, I'm not, I don't even think about it, you know? So it's wow. just a huge difference. So it yeah. completely freed you, like literally. <laughs> it, was a, it was very imprisoning, yeah. It, it, it was, and I didn't notice it, you know, but like I said, I had to also, that was another thing I had to address is the habit of having to eat after I've eaten because of how I did that uh. when I was vegan. And I noticed that I would eat the, I would eat like a nice patty with some eggs on it. And, and I would just be like, wow, I don't, I'm not hungry anymore. Like I'm satiated and it would be hours later and I would wow. not have the desire to eat. And normally I would be eating 30 minutes after I had something to eat, you know? So that was that's been a huge time saver as well, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's absolutely yeah. life-changing and liberating, like, in every way possible. You know, it's crazy. You're just like, I didn't even know I was, like, investing all of my day into food. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, you're one of the more relatable stories to me and it's, it's so amazing to hear that you're able to keep your mind open during this whole thing and end yeah. up switching it up and finding that it works so well for you. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, you know, too, I had like an epiphany right before I stopped being vegan too. It was because after I had watched all those um, vegan 
videos, even though I was convinced that I was going to eat meat again, seriously, and I had no problem doing that, <laughs> um, I also had to go through this, like, rationalizing in my mind of yeah. well, what, you know, what was it? And I, I had to admit I was self-righteous. I had to admit that I was um, also not comprehending, really, that everything is one and that it's not like I'm eating outside of nature. The way nature provides the plants and the fruits for us to eat, it also provides the animals, you know, yeah. and that animal is me. I'm, I'm eating myself. I'm not eating something outside of that. You know, I'm consuming myself. And I think the problem becomes when we do not put work into the world that helps to better ourselves and the community around us, because now that food has gone in vain. However, when you take that and you use it to put energy into your vessel so that you can do more work, then I think that's justified and that's respectable. Yeah. That's exactly what I say. I say the exact <laughs> yeah. same thing, like for sure. Yeah, yeah. You're taking a life to give yourself life to give back to the world. And if you're not yeah. functioning to the best of your ability, you're not thriving, you're surviving. So it affects your whole yeah. human experience in a negative way. And then it affects the world that you could do in the world, literally the work that you could do in the world. 100, yes, 100%. And, and, and um, even though I am against factory farming and, and that whole process of, of how uh, animals are treated like yeah. terribly by the big you know, uh, corporations, I don't feel like standing outside and processing for that is going to uh, change that. What changes that is us not eating that anymore so yeah. that that demand is no longer there and that we actually go back to what we originated doing which is hunting and fishing and or going to local butchers who are doing that yeah and um you know and, and rather than just eating something you got off the shelves at walmart or something yeah for sure yeah so <laughs> you went through a whole process just like anyone does that transitions mm -hmm. back to animal foods after being vegan where you had to start deprogramming yourself of all the brainwashing yes. that you'd had done and would you say alongside that you went through some sort of emotional process with, when you yeah. were going through this whole experience Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it was just like the first thing was admitting that you were wrong. <laughs> that, that's the first thing. Is just, However, I didn't mind because at that point my life was on the line. So yeah. um, I, I was fine admitting that my test that I did didn't show the results that I thought it would. And that's fine. And um, then it was that. And then it was going through feeling bad because I was starving myself for so long and recognizing all of the damage that I had done, you know what I mean? It's kind of like after a car accident, you're looking at the car and you're looking at everything, you know? And, um, and so that, that was that. And then it was just being able to go back and, and change how I saw food and change my relationship with it. And, um, and then obviously too, how I saw animals, you know, yeah. just because I just kind of took this neglecting effect in the sense of where as long as I'm not eating them, I'm not damaging them. You know, you know what I mean? But that's not true yeah. because it, you're taking lives, even eating animal, uh, even eating plants, you're still taking animals lives. Yeah. So, you know, I, I just, I, I went through that whole process and then finally got to a point where I was just like, you know what? Um, as long as I'm honorably eating only what I need and I'm giving as much as I'm taking, I, you know, I can respect that. And yeah. I think that's honorable. Yeah, yeah, so with all of what you've done to move through all of what you're talking about and your whole process with that, it's able to shift your whole paradigm. So you're just like 100%. seeing things through a complete different light, so to speak, or goggles. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that when I was vegan, I always used to talk about how everything is one and we're all one, you know, and you get into that whole thing. But you, it's like people just say that. They don't really know what that experience yes. is until you actually experience the oneness, you know? And and I remember thinking to myself, eating that meat, like, now I'm balanced because I know what it's like to have that energy from the earth, from the animals, from the sea, from the plants, all of that. You know what I mean? I'm able to synergize within myself and be the steward of those things as yeah. well. So. Yeah, and be the alchemist of those foods you're eating. Yes, for sure. indeed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, it's really amazing to hear. So yeah, before we end the interview, do you think there's anything else that's important for people to hear that you haven't talked about already? Yeah. Uh, you know, I would say really ask yourself why are you doing it? Because if it's if you're doing if you're being vegan or, or committing to that lifestyle to be spiritual, it's not necessary to be spiritual. You know, you don't need spirituality is your connection regardless of all the external things. 
you know, and so you should never base your spirituality off of something outside of you. It yeah. has to come from within. And, you know, I asked uh, somebody on my on my channel when I put my vegan video up, somebody was like, uh, you know, uh, talking about the, you know, I'm not, I was never vegan and all these things. And I said, well, if you saw an animal on the side of the road suffering, would you take your <laughs> to end its suffering or would you let it continue to suffer? Yeah. You know, and they said, well, I would take the <laughs> and sort of end the suffering. Now, you would not eat the, the body of that animal because you don't know how it was taken. However... There is a certain type of uh, a certain type of charity or or just uh, care that you give, yeah. and it, that that example just goes to show that just because you're taking a life doesn't mean that you're not also saving that life by taking it. Yeah, you know, so it's just it's so many balances that we don't consider, and I just want really want people to make sure you watch ex vegan videos before you go vegan, make sure you test and measure yourself because. Just because you started being vegan and now you're not as constipated, that doesn't mean that it was what you were eating, everything, it was the meat that was the problem. It could have been how you were doing that, the mood you had when you were eating, because that also affects your digestion. And it could also be the quality, which oftentimes it is, the quality of what you're eating. So really analyze why you're doing it and test that out. And if you don't have a measurement and if you don't, if you're not able to give a measurement for yourself for that, then you really need to ask yourself, why are you doing it? Because if you're saving the animals, you're not really saving the animals. You, you think you are. Yeah. But what you're eating, you know, the foods you're eating, the plant foods that you're eating, animals are to bring you that. Yeah. People are to bring you that. You, you know what I mean? So it's people that are to bring you those imported cashews that you love to make those cashew cheeses with. And you don't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, it's, it's it's a really good point that you're making. I, I'd like to oh, add yeah. on to that, and and, and then you can yeah, respond further if you want. But it's like you said multiple times, people think that a plant based or a vegan diet is a complete non violent yeah. diet that doesn't yeah, harm not. animals. When it's not true, when things come from monocrops where they destroy the whole environment, they destroy the soil, yeah. the microbes, they get rid of all the animals, and they have the pest control that's in place. It's like it's not a completely non diet it's just like vegans just get into this bubble where they're like oh i'm not harming any animals and then the good point that you made is what about the people that are part of the production line of those vegan foods coming to you like if you look into date farms in israeli and what they do to the people there it's messed up and so many vegans buy that type of stuff so there could be a lot of vegans that can become pro animal but anti-human and then there's the whole thing of do you yeah. own a MacBook? If you own a MacBook, you're paying for people to be in a very bad environment and paid a low wage. Yes. Do you buy anything from China? Then you're, right. you're paying for harm to be done to someone or something. Right, right. And, and, and the whole spiritual thing, I don't want to eat because I don't want to consume life and take life. It's like, you know, I bring up the, the iPhone as well. Like you said, the MacBook, the iPhone, every part of this phone, especially the most important, the lithium and the cobalt, is mine out of uh, the Congo in Africa, and, and those children are yeah. giving their lives to bring you this phone that you promote your vegan lifestyle on in a self-righteous <laughs> way that you're not harming anybody, but the very apparatus that you're using to promote your lifestyle of no harm is harmful. Yeah, it, it's it's bread and. Yeah, it's, it's com- you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like <laughs> these people have got complete cognitive dissonance, like literally. Yes. It's just like they yeah. see it in one way, but they're just like, no, 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 I'm not going to look at all this other stuff and I'm just going to have people that eat animal foods and think that I am like some yeah. amazing person because I'm on a vegan diet and on this apparent non-violent diet when it isn't. And, and like you said mm, a few times about the spiritual aspects, would you say for you personally with the spiritual mm-hmm. side of things that you thought that maybe a vegan diet was one of the more spiritual diets for you to eat and possibly yeah. other people oh yeah i did and, and and that's not to say that i don't think that small like maybe a day or three days or seven days if you need that of, of not consuming any foods when you're in a uh, yeah. operative state to do so of course <laughs> you know uh, it won't bring a certain level of clarity however it's just like you know for, for those who are into the, the uh, understanding of the chakras and things you're going up and down. You're you're never just staying in one spot because that would be that wouldn't be balanced. Yeah. You have to oscillate between two points to get that middle ground. And, and so you're going up and down that ladder. You're climbing up and down. You're taking what you're gaining from the crown to the root and from the root to the crown. 
And when you only stay in one area, then you become imbalanced. Yeah. And so that's what that vegan diet is. You know, you get the mental downloads, but I still get those and I eat meat. Yeah. You know what I mean? I still get those. That, that hasn't stopped. It's increased, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's, 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 um, I did it because I thought I was being more spiritual, but really I, I wasn't being more spiritual. I, I was maybe about to join the spirit realm, but I wasn't yeah. being more spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. What I was. wow yeah yeah for yeah. sure yeah if you kept obviously going just like if i'd kept going it's just like it was a downhill trend from there yeah. and like yeah. yeah it's just inevitable in the end for you personally mm-hmm. that it was just like going to end up in more serious chronic health issues if you just stuck it even longer than you did yeah right and, and i saw your before and afters too and that was when I started seeing the ex-vegans and I started seeing the fruitarian, I really don't even know how y'all did that because I tried it and I was just like negative. I can't do it. That's another level of discipline that it's like I have so much respect for that because I don't. But the thing is, is that it's, it's interesting that even though we certain people did certain extremes like that and I didn't, we still had the same results. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we still exactly. had the same results, so it didn't even matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And something I'd like to mention briefly is, like you said, you got benefits like instantly. Yet vegans make videos out there. I know certain vegan YouTubers that say, "Oh, people saying that fish is magic and this animal food's magic, and it just resolves all of my issues." But what would you have to say to people like that, where you did actually get such great benefits straight away? What What, what was your sort of reasons behind that happening, or your yeah. thought process? So- you know, so um, for people who say that, well, first off, they can't say anything because they haven't tried it. They haven't yeah. tested it out. You know, so I always say, if you really think that way, I know you might have been vegan for 20 or 30 years or whatever you would like to claim, uh, which is impossible because there's no way you're not eating some animal product in some form, shape or form, you know. But anyway, um, you have to try it. You can't just say what's not happening if you don't try it, you know. So that's number one. Number two I know this for sure. I know that my brain felt like it was shrinking. And wow. I've eaten every chia seed, flax seed, hemp seed, walnut. I've, I've ate it all <laughs> in multiple amounts. None of that gave me the same feeling that that salmon did within 10 minutes. Yeah. None of that did. So it's just, you know, I, I really uh, I, I have to tell people for those who, who are willing to do the test, do a test and really allow yourself to feel the difference between eating meat and not eating meats get high quality meats and you have to test it for yourself that's that's really my thing on everything is you have to test it and if you haven't tested it and if you don't have a methodology then i I really can't listen to what you're saying because you're just talking out your ass yeah yeah exactly i think it's really good like have that relative like comparative viewpoint so like you can't like you said there might be vegans out there saying well okay animal foods aren't good but it's like have you actually tried eating high quality animal foods like this lovely lady that i'm interviewing and then go and experiment with it for a month or so and see if you feel better you might find that a lot of things go away that you didn't realize are an issue just like she didn't on the vegan diet Mm -hmm. so yeah Mm -hmm. it's like and yeah when someone's been starving so long like she had and myself when you're getting something you hadn't had for so long of course you're going to feel amazing benefits straight away yes (laughs) i mean immediately there was no question when i felt my blood run back to my hands i was just like oh this is (laughs) everything i'm so i apologize to myself so many times yeah it, just looking in the mirror being like i apologize i didn't listen and then i wasn't even conscious to look and understand what was going on you know so anybody who's considering it you know the best a vegan lifestyle can do is give you a nice seven day detox you know what i mean but that's about the only thing and i say yeah. detox just as in allowing that your current lifestyle if it's on a sad american diet and processed diet It'll allow you to have a nice little, you know, yeah. elimination of things. However, you need that animal in order to nourish your body properly. You yeah. need it. There's no yeah. way around that. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, thank yeah. you very much for joining us today. Very and much. what I'll do is everyone has put links down below for our social media links. Okay. You can get in touch with her and check out our content as well. Yes. And, yeah. 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 So, yeah, people, if you're someone that's not thriving on a vegan diet, like I said, listen to her and you can listen to other ex-vegan interview uh, interview videos on my channel. If you're an ex-vegan that wants to be interviewed, let me know down below. 
leave your comments questions down below don't forget to like share and subscribe and yeah yes. all enjoy the rest of your amazing day bye i will and i appreciate you so much yeah thanks very much <laughs>